linoleic acid contributes to insulin resistance in part through this fat cell effect because linoleic acid will inhibit the fat cell's ability to multiply. And so as, a fat, as the fat tissue, elevated insulin, sufficient energy, is being told and fueled to grow, if there's linoleic acid coming in, it accumulates in the fat cell, converts, becomes this other molecule called 4-HNE, 4-hydroxynonanol, 4-HNE. And 4-HNE will basically dictate to the fat tissue and say, fat tissue, you have been told to grow. I'm going to tell you how to grow, and that's specifically through hypertrophy. Now, insulin does that too. Um, insulin will also selectively promote hypertrophy, but linoleic acid contributes to that. So this is another unique mechanism whereby it contributes to insulin resistance by selectively influencing the way the body gains fat. A common um, refrain in the plant-based community is that fat causes, well, specifically saturated fat. In fact, they will use these really scientific terms like gums up or clogs up the insulin receptor, which is just silly. Um, but there's a there's an ounce, there's a speck of truth in what they've found. And, and in fact, I've contributed to this. So whether they know it or not, in some instances, they're actually invoking my own work um, from my earlier research during my postdoctoral time. So if you take cells or you infuse – treat them with saturated fats or you infuse them with – or you infuse an animal rather with saturated fat, they will become insulin resistant. That's not the case if you say um, treat the cells or infuse the animals with oleic acid, the monounsaturated fat. And then it's kind of varying responses in the case of the – omega-6 polyunsaturated fat linoleic acid from soybean oil, for example, or any refined seed oils. Um, so in this case, the set, there is some evidence. Um, but remember, infusing saturated fat, you know, me having, Rich, you come into my lab and we stick an IV in you and infuse some palmitate, that is not the same as you eating palmitate. And so now we go to the human studies, like some of the work from Jeff Volick at the university, at the Ohio State University, and he has found that in his work, you can have a, a low-carb group that is eating multiples more saturated fat than a low-fat group, and they not only have a greater reduction in inflammation, but they have this significant improvement in insulin resistance. So at the level of what goes into your mouth, which is where we should care, um, where this happens, um, especially if carbohydrates are restricted, the saturated fat is not causing insulin resistance. Now, to complicate it a little bit, if you have someone eating a high-carb diet and then you add to that high-carb diet saturated fat or monounsaturated fat, the saturated fat does have cause greater insulin resistance. Um, but of course, that's in the context of a high-carb diet, which does not apply, of course, to a ketogenic diet. That's the opposite of a ketogenic diet. So these plant-based plant -based advocates that are vilifying saturated fat, they're just selectively taking some lines of evidence and applying it to fit their ideas. Now, what happens when you take a plant-based diet and compare it to a ketogenic diet, um, which generally is going to be in, on the opposite end of saturated fat consumption, there is not a single study to show that a plant-based diet outperforms um, the ketogenic diet. Now, that is not the same as like the Stanford twin study that was just published that was not ketogenic. They had a plant-based group and then they had an omnivore group, which was eating lasagna and hamburgers, you know, all kinds of stuff, not, not ketogenic whatsoever. So it was heavily, heavily skewed to find the result that they wanted to, that they wanted to get. And of course, immediately Netflix made a documentary about it. I can highlight that study in a future metabolic classroom just specific to that report.